Tonight's game between the Giants and the Dodgers comes to you from Candlestick Park in San Francisco. Hi everybody and a very pleasant good evening to you wherever you may be and first of all let it be known and truly declared it is hot in San Francisco. I mean hot 80 degrees and higher all day and still that warm in the ballpark tonight it borders on the unbelievable. But come to think of it the Giants border on the unbelievable. Let's go back a little bit and realize that there was John Montefusco fighting with his manager Dave Bristol. Willie McCovey announcing his retirement. Mike Ivey announcing his retirement. Some of the as they call them up here malcontents traded away. Ed Holicki went to the Angels and Mark Hill went to Seattle. There was also the rumor going around the ballpark today. In fact tonight as of about 630 that Mike Ivey might become unretired. Well they brought Max Venable back up from Phoenix but the story is that Ivy and his attorney and others are holding conversations and meetings with Bob Lurie so we're not really sure just how long Mike Ivy will be retired. Apparently it's a matter of three hundred thousand dollars a year as to whether he gets any or part thereof if he does call it a career. Uh, there's all kinds of stories so the Giants are almost as unbelievable as the weather. They have been playing pretty good ball here at Candlestick Park and Vita Blue always pitches well here. Jerry Royce coming in is eight and one. We will get to the ordinary stats and lineups right after this message. For San Francisco their lineup reads this way Bill North in center field. Darrell Evans in the number two slot at third base. And Jack Clark, who's been on quite a tear in right field hitting third. Rich Murray will be at first base. And the gag up here is that Murray will be remembered as a fellow who retired two first basemen in one week. Willie McCovey and Mike Ivey. Well, maybe. So Murray is at first. He's Eddie Murray's brother, Eddie the big star with Baltimore. Larry Herndon will be in left field. Joe Strain at second base. Johnny LeMaster at short. Mike Sadek behind the plate and Vita Blue on the mound. Blue is nine and four with the league but he is a vastly improved pitcher since the Dodgers beat him in April. He is five and two at Candlestick this year and twenty five and eleven lifetimes. He's particularly tough up here. Let's take a look at the Giants defensively since we have a moment. There is Rich Murray at first base. At second Joe Strain. The shortstop Johnny LeMaster and the third baseman Darrell Evans. In left field Larry Herndon. In center Bill North. And around and right Jack Clark. Mike Sadek behind the plate. And on the mound Mr. Vita Blue and boy has he had his act together. In his last nine starts, he's seven and two. In fact, the two left-handers come in with unbelievable numbers. In his last six complete games, Blues earned run average is just under two. And Jerry Royce, in his last four games, his earned run average is one. So we might have a dandy. Davy Lopes, followed by Rudy Law, and then Reggie Smith. The Dodgers have won six straight against the Giants. They've won 14 of 18 against the Giants last year. And they've won two dozen of the three dozen played up here since 1976. <laughs> 0 and 1 to Davey, who comes in here hitting 235. It's hard to see. It's one of those now you see him, now you don't. Earlier in the year, Rudy Law led off and Davy Lopes hit second. Now Davy Lopes is leading off and Law is hitting second. So a newspaper man asked Tommy Lasorda about the switch. That's his try. And when Law led off, Lasorda said, I'm doing it for the good of the team. Now that Lopes is leading off and Law is hitting second, Lasorda said, Well, I'm doing that for the good of the team. And there's a base hit to left field. So Davey at first base he has stolen 11 out of 15 and here is Rudy Law. It is very tough to be in sync 
as far as a leadoff base dealer and the number two hitter. It was ideal when Maury Wills was stealing his bases because he had the very patient, extremely intelligent, and unselfish Jim Gilliam hitting second. However, with Law and Lopes, they really have been unable to play in sync all year. So they're going to try Lopes leading off and Law hitting second for a while anyway. When the Dodgers saw the Giants earlier this year, the Giants were about as bad a team as you ever saw. They were dreadful. However, they have been playing much better of late. The Giants have won 13 of the last 18 that they played here. They have a very poor road record. They're worse than two to one against on the road. And they get killed when they play the West on the road. They've only beaten the West twice in 20 games. But they're home, and they could be tougher. Well, last year, the Giants were the fourth worst fielding team in the big leagues. Earlier this year, there were three Giants who forgot how many outs there were. You might remember Bob Nepper going after a double play against the Dodgers when he didn't need it. Jack Clark trotting off the field on the second down. Rudy almost got that one in the chin. The third man who forgot how many outs was Mike Ivey. And in a game up here against Cincinnati, with a runner at second base, as you see Blue shave Law. Bad miss. In a game against Cincinnati with Mejias at second base, ground ball, and they threw to Ivey for what Mike thought was the third out. So, you know, he rolled the ball to the mound, and Mejia scored. And they tell us that they jumped all over Ivy. Foul back out of play. And when you read about how the fans were on Mike Ivy, that was one of the many reasons. Ivy this winter cut a tendon in his finger cleaning a hunting knife. And Mike has never been able to get on track, and the fans got on him, and he announced his retirement. But as we said, there's a rumor now that. He might unretire. We'll see. It's the Giants and the Dodgers. The Dodgers two back of Houston. The Giants are 11 back. Tonight, then tomorrow afternoon, and a doubleheader on Sunday. There goes Lopes. The pitch is a strike, and look at the throw. So Davey just keeps on going. So for the Giants, they have made almost an error a game. And Mike Sadek missed second base by several feet. There wasn't even a chance for LeMaster. So it's a stolen base for Lopes, and he takes third on the error. When Milt May was catching, they were blaming May for base stealing. You know that earlier this year, the first 14 base stealers were successful against the Giants. Finally, May got Andre Dawson. That's a foul ball. And just to pursue the fact, the Giants have stolen 39 bases. You know what the opposition has done? They've stolen 72. So it's really one-sided. So Lopes is at third, two and two to Rudy Law. The infield is back to a normal depth. Law just trying to make contact. And it's hit off Blue's glove, dying on the grass. The run scores. It'll be a base hit for Rudy Law. So Rudy hit a line drive, and Blue tried to flag it. It got away, and Vida had no idea where the ball was. And it was in no man's land behind the mound. Strain came in, but had no play. Right is ticked off. He thought he should have held on to it. Here's Reggie. He was out for seven games. Jay Johnstone gave him quite a rest. Ball one. 
Reggie against the Giants has a half a dozen hits good for a half a dozen runs batted in including two home runs. One and one. The Dodgers saw Vida Blue April the 21st in Dodger Stadium when he was the losing pitcher. And they also saw him up here April 30th. He didn't have a decision. So they're going to be watching Rudy. When Blue pitched against the Dodgers up at Dodger Stadium. Reggie Smith homered against him and so did Ron Say. And he had him picked off and Murray throws down to the master and that's considered caught stealing. So Rich Murray making the throw to the master and Rudy Law nailed having been picked off by Vita Blue. One ball and one strike to count. Blue is five and two here at Candlestick. In fact, he had a seven game winning streak this year. And the first time he lost to San Francisco was the 17th of June. Montreal beat him two to one. Good sinker. When the Giants finally got it together, as you see Steve Garvey on deck, they won 10 of 14. And Blue won five of those ten all by himself. Three and two. So Reggie Smith returns to the wars. The Dodgers leading one to nothing. Foul back. We can tell you that Houston just scored a run in the bottom of the seventh inning. And at the end of seven, Cincinnati four and Houston three. The Reds are five and a half back of Houston. Danny Ozark coaching at third. Manuel Geronimo Mota around his neck is a gold chain with the gold numerals one four five. You know why. Down he goes. So the chant in the background although it sounds like booze they're just powering blue and with two out. Steve Garvey the batter. High foul that'll carry out of play I believe. Shadek's going to come over but it's back in the crowd. On one. Garvey is hitting 282 with 15 home runs, 57 runs batted in. Owen one to Steve, Dusty Baker on deck. Owen two. In all the years that we have been coming to Candlestick Park, this is without a doubt the hottest night game in history. It feels more like Atlanta or Cincinnati than San Francisco. Yes look at that and I mean that's comfortable. It's like being at the beach tonight. Oh and two. Now one and two to Garvey two down and the Dodgers leading one nothing in the first inning. Two and two. By the blue just missing. Dusty on deck. Garvey jammed on a breaking ball and Rich Murray should handle it. So the Dodgers settle for a run. Two hits and an error. And at the end of half an inning Dodgers won. Giants coming up. We take a look at the Dodgers defensively. Steve Garvey at first. Davey Lopes at second. Bill Russell at short. 
Ron Shea at third. Dusty Baker in left. Rudy Law in center. Reggie Smith in right. Steve Yeager behind the plate. And Jerry Royce ready to pitch to Bill North. Ball one. Bill North, switch hitter. He's had his physical problems this year. North had a cyst removed from his left eye not too long ago. He's had a sore left shoulder. He also injured his left hand sliding. So put it all together and he's missed 17 giant games this year. Hitting 247 and doing the bulk of his hitting right handed. So Roy starts off 3 and 0. North is also the base dealer for San Francisco. 3 and 0. In there. That's in there. Come back, Billy. Now you know your heart wasn't in it or you would have thrown your bat away. So full count to Bill North. On deck, Darrell Evans. Ground ball to Davy Lopes. And that'll do it for Bill North. One away. By the way, we're working with three umpires tonight. Jim Quick is the plate umpire. Jerry Dale is at first. There's Jerry. And over at third is Bob Engel. Paul Rungi is not here. Here's Darrell Evans. He was named the captain by Dave Bristol. And the giant leader takes ball one. For Evans, earlier this year, he would just as soon forget about it. You know, he made three errors on two pitches. It's a pop fly to Dusty Baker. Two down. Darrell also had five errors in the first four innings he played. But Evans now has settled down as the captain one of the spearheads but here is the number one man that would be Jack Clark Clark with 13 home runs 43 runs batted in hitting 293 at the end of April he was hitting 193 so he's picked up a hundred points in the last seven weeks ball one he's had to hit 330 to do that so Clark makes the club go one nothing Dodgers first inning two out fouled away down the right field line in the lower deck in the count one and one don't forget the Giants will be coming to Dodger Stadium and for the giant Dodger game of Friday night July 4th general admission seating is now on sale a limited number of reserve seats also remain fouled away. The Giants will be at Dodger Stadium on Friday night the 4th, Saturday night the 5th, and Sunday afternoon July 6th, and of course Sunday afternoon Old Timers Day. That's Jimmy Lefevre coaching at first, and a moment ago we had a shot at Jimmy Davenport. There he is, coaching for the Giants. Ball three. The Dodgers here for the weekend tomorrow afternoon and a doubleheader Sunday and then they'll be home Monday night with San Diego. Three and two the count. Ground ball down to Russell. In the dirt and knocked down by Garvin. Tried to back in and couldn't. It was a bad throw from the moment it left Russell's hand. The Garvey who digs most of them out, unable to handle it. So the Dodgers commit an error, and the batter now is Rich Murray.
Murray is a kid, as we said. The joke up here is that he will always be remembered for retiring two first basemen in a week. Ball one. Since being called up, he's hitting 275 with a home run and 10 runs batted in. Born in Los Angeles and lives there. One and oh. Now one and one. Jerry Royce working on Rich Murray. He's the younger brother of Orioles first baseman Eddie Murray. He has two other brothers who played pro baseball. Fouled away. Next Sunday, when we have Old Timers Day at Dodger Stadium, Rich Murray will be all of 23 years old on Old Timers Day. Went to Locke High School in Los Angeles. Ground ball slowly to Bill Russell. Quickly to Davey Lopes ahead of the arrival by Clark, who hurt himself. Jack might have jammed his right leg or ankle in trying to get to the bag. So Clark limping. It'll be a moment or two before he's ready to continue. Nothing for the Giants, although they do have an error, and at the end of an inning, Dodgers won, Giants nothing. The second inning with the Dodgers leading the Giants one to nothing. Jack Clark never went to the pit for repairs, but the pit came to him out there at second base, and he got slowly to his feet, and he's back at his position in right field. There you can see a, a knot of anxious Giants, and you can imagine he's the club's hottest hitter and hurt his ankle sliding into second, but he's all right. So Jack Clark in right field, and we move to the second inning. The Dodgers will have Dusty Baker, Ron Say, and Bill Russell. Baker hitting 300, and actually his average goes a notch or so above that because of the extra hit he received credit for. It's a fly ball to Clark. One away on one pitch, and the batter will be Ron Say. Say hitting 257. He has 10 home runs, 32 runs batted in. Say had a two run home run against by the blue the first time they hooked up on the 21st of April. Fouled away. Small crowd on a hot Friday night. One out second inning one to nothing Dodgers. The Reds fail to score in the top of the eighth, so they're in the bottom of the eighth inning at Houston with the Reds leading four to three. You're watching Dodger Baseball on KTTV, Channel 11, Metro Media Television. Foul back, good fastball. Blue would appear to have good stuff. The Dodger run in the first inning was ruled unearned. The throw into center field is what made it unearned. One and two. Ball two. Well, you heard of time on your hands. It's nice to know at Candlestick they have hands on their time. If you remember the last time we were at Candlestick Park, someone had stolen the hands off the clock. Well, they're back. So hands on their time at San Francisco. That's out of play. Two and two to Ron Say. Dave Goltz and John Montefusco tomorrow. There it is. Ball three. Sunday, Don Sutton and Bird Hooten against Rob Nepper and Alan Ripley. By the blue. Trying for his 10th win. Line drive, fair ball down in the corner. Herndon waiting for the carom, and Say will go into second base easily with a stand-up double. So 
So say waiting to be picked up with Russell and Jaeger to follow. He whistled that thing down in the corner. So Ron Shea at second base, and here's Bill Russell. Russell hitting 291. By the Blue won his 10th game last year on August the 12th. So you can see how far ahead of last year's pace he is. Nine and four with the league, 0 and one with the Dodgers, three and five lifetime. Fly ball. Herndon calling that he has it, but Bill North is the captain of the outfield and he takes it. Of course, that used to be the old rule anyway in baseball. The center fielder handles anything he can get to. So two down, and here is Steve Yeager. Yeager hit his first home run the other night to break that tie in Houston. Steve hitting 193, and they're going to take the bat away from him. They'll walk him and take their best shot with Jerry Royce. I would say this stage of the game and the way Jaeger has been hitting it's a little surprising because baseball managers live and die by the edge and they always feel one of the edges is to start an inning with a pitcher and you would think certainly that blue would at least pitch to Jaeger so that if he gets him Royce would start off the third inning. But the way the Giants have been struggling, Bristol has decided to walk Steve, so here's Jaeger. In the eighth inning, it is four to three in favor of Cincinnati, but Tom Hume has had to relieve Frank Pastore. So apparently the Astros are kicking up their heels in the great indoors of Houston. One ball and no strikes. One and one. Royce as a hitter this year has two hits one of them a double. He has struck out 25 percent of the time. Ground ball that hooks right at the bag fair ball and Murray will go to it and that'll be that. So if nothing else the Dodgers get Royce out of the way but they do leave say in Jaeger and at the end of an inning and a half Dodgers won Giants nothing. Tommy Lasorda and Manny Moda appealing with the plate umpire Jim Quick that the ground ball that Royce hit for the last out to Rich Murray was a foul ball. Here we can take another look. Here's the ground ball leaving the bat. Jaeger running away from first. Now watch it. And the Dodgers feel that it was outside first base. It never crossed the bag. Jim Quick who is straddling the line as the plate umpire said it did so it was ruled a fair ball and that was the end of the inning. Tommy Lasorda. He had a great career against the Giants since becoming Dodger manager. He's three to one to the good as far as wins and losses are concerned. And yeah, we have ball one to Larry Herndon. Larry Herndon hitting 237. In there, one and one. Herndon with three home runs, 19 runs batted in. Hit off the thumbs, and it's rolled to Lopes, one away. One down, and Joe Strain coming up. And of course, that's another insight into what's been happening with the Giants this year. They gave Rennie Stennett almost enough to settle a national debt. And Joe Strain is hitting 318. So Stennett, with his big fat contract, is sitting on it in the giant dugout, hitting 244. Ball one. Of course, Rennie Stennett's had one of those years, too. His wife gave birth to a baby girl April the 19th. There's a drive hit down the right field line, slicing in the corner foul. Reggie couldn't get it. And they count one and one. Rennie Stennett's wife 
gave birth to a baby girl April the 19th. Show you what kind of a year Stennett is having. Rennie was giving out cigars, and on the cigar it said, it's a boy. Evidently, he bought them in advance. Well, he only missed by one. So here's Joe Strain. Yeah, it's been some year up here. Ground ball to Russell. Two down and Johnny Lamaster the batter. We were talking before about retirees and how the crowds were chewing up Mike Ivy. How about this fella? Johnny Lamaster. He has a terrible time here at Candlestick Park. The fans have been all over him. So much so. He came to the bat in one game with boo on the back of his shirt instead of the name LeMaster. Just B-O-O. -O. Crowd really got on him. But his numbers tell you what a Jekyll and Hyde he is. Home and away. Foul ball out of play. 1978, LeMaster hit one point under 300 on the road, and he hit 160 at home. Into June this year, he was hitting 296 on the road and less than 100 at home. And he hates it here. And he's not going to like that very much. So at the end of two, the Dodgers won and the Giants nothing. We're going to the third inning. The Dodgers leading the Giants one to nothing. Kishore and with us, Davey Lopes single, stole second, and while stealing second, Sadek threw the ball into center field, Davey taking third, and Rudy Law smashed one off by the Blues glove, Davey coming home to score. So Davey one for one with a stolen base, leading it off, top of the third, one to nothing Dodgers. Ball one. By the blue, of course, for a left-hander to go against the Dodgers, that's quite a battle. The Dodgers are 8-0 and oh against left-handers. The drive to right center, Billy North on his mule, and it's over his head. And that's going to go against the fence, and Lopes is being waved to third. And the relay to strain, he'll hold up with a triple. So we can take another look at Davy Lopes. And Davy hustling for three. So Lopes at third with nobody out. Law, Smith, and Garvey trying to pick him up, and the Dodgers leading one to nothing. Ball one. Rudy with a base hit, one for one. The Astros knocked out Pastore and scored twice in the bottom of the eighth inning. That should get Lopes home. The out recorded at first, and the Dodgers lead two to nothing. So they go to the ninth inning in Houston with the Astros leading the Reds five to four. The Rudy Law has two RBIs, and here's Reggie Smith, strike. That's foul, out of play, 0-2. Ball one. Reggie started the night hitting 336. 
coming back from a painful lower back. Two and two. Jay Johnstone did a great job in the starting lineup for the last seven games. Johnstone hit 346. Ground ball to third, and Darrell Evans gets him. Two down, and Steve Garvey coming up. Garvey fouled out in the first inning. Garvey has been hot. He's hit in six straight, 15 of his last 17. Over that stretch, he's hit better than 320. Strike. Garvey came in here hitting 282. Dodgers two, Giants nothing. We're in the top of the third inning with two out. Tomorrow, Dave Goltz and John Montefusco. They've both been beaten up. And then a doubleheader Sunday. Two and one. Ball three. By the blue, trying to win his tenth. Ground ball to shortstop. LeMaster is there. So the Dodgers get a triple and a run. And at the end of two and a half innings, Dodgers two, Giants nothing. We're going to the bottom of the third. The Dodgers leading the Giants two to nothing. And we can tell you it's all over in Texas. Houston came from behind and beat Cincinnati five to four. So Houston now leading the third place Reds by six and a half. Here's Mike Sadek. They check it first. Swing, says Jerry Dale. 0 and 1. Sadek, been in 22 games and made the most of it. He's hitting 323. One and one. Boy, good live fastball. One and two. Jerry Royce, eight victories, only one loss. Perhaps as big a surprise as there is in the National League this year. That's it. See you later. Boy, he's just breezing along. Jerry came in here with an earned run average of two. He has three shutouts. Three complete games. And just looks like an absolute million dollars. The Dodgers made the deal, remember? Sore arm Rick Roden went to Pittsburgh. Boy, they got something here. Fouled away. By the blue. He has five hits this year. One ball and one strike. Vida strikes out half the time. One and two. You get a pitcher who strikes out 25% or less, you have a, a very much of a problem at the plate, making contact. Fly ball to left field to Dusty Baker. So the only giant base runner was Jack Clark, who got aboard on Russell's bad throw. Royce has retired six in a row, and here is Bill North. North grounded out in the first inning. The North Oval one. Bill hitting 246. Ball one.
2 0. Dodgers leading 2 0. Bottom of the third inning, two out, bases empty. So Royce falling behind the North 3 0. He had trouble with him first time out. In there. Billy does not do the right act. I mean, if you're going to act, you got to throw that bat away. You can't hold on to it. That's a tip off. You're going to have to work on that. Good shake of the head, however. Ground ball to Russell. And they get him. So Jerry Royce is not allowed to hit through three innings. He's retired seven in a row, and he's made it look easy up to here. Just a lazy fly ball twice to left field. And at the end of three, with Ross coming up in a minute, it's the Dodgers two and the Giants nothing. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to balmy San Francisco. And it's not often we can say that. Tonight, the Dodgers trying to beat a left-hander again by the blue this time. There's not been a southpaw in the league to defeat the Dodgers this year. And the Dodgers have jumped off to a two to nothing lead here tonight because Davey Lopes has been able to get on base and Rudy Law has been able to bring him in. Let's go to the fourth. Dusty Baker leads off against Blue and takes a ball. One and one. Dusty got a break yesterday. The official score in Houston changed a ruling from the night before and gave him credit for a fifth hit. He grounds one to LeMaster. Johnny Lee comes up. And throws to Murray for the out. So that means Baker has had two five hit games in his career. The other one was in Cincinnati a couple of years ago. Ron Say doubled his first time up tonight. Hit well and in the corner, but foul. Bob Engel, the third base umpire, in foul territory, and that's where the umpires are working this year. And he had a good look at that one. Say usually gives Blue a bad time. Off speed and foul at the plate. 0 and 2. Ron has had a phenomenal power record against the Giants the last couple of years. 17 home runs against San Francisco in the last two seasons plus six games of this year. But this time he strikes out on a breaking ball. For Blue, his second strikeout. He got Reggie Smith in the first of them. And that'll bring on Bill Russell. Russell fly to center in the second inning. Blue won his first five decisions here at Candlestick this year. That's high for a ball. Finally, Montreal beat him here ten nights ago, two to one. Snapped his seven-game winning streak. Low 2 0. And then in his last start here, he went against Steve Carlton, and the Phillies came back to beat Blue 4 3. So he's lost his last two starts in this ballpark. There's a strike to Russell, 2 and 1. Steve Yeager on deck. Two out, bases empty, fourth inning, 2 nothing Dodgers. 3 and 1 to Russell. The Giants are going to try out another left hander to face the Dodgers in one of the games of the doubleheader Sunday. Bob Nepper ripped the left, turned in a play on a hop, and the Dodgers have their fifth hit off Blue. The Giants are still looking for their first hit against Jerry Royce. Steve Yeager was intentionally walked his last time up. Going back to the game Wednesday night in Houston. The Dodgers and Astros tied 2-2 in the seventh. Yeager came up, runners at second and third and two out. And Bill Burton decided to pitch to Yeager, and of course, then he hit the three-run homer to win the game, and Russell just gets back at first. 
We asked Tommy Lasorda after the game. If Verdon had intentionally walked Yeager, would you have hit for Bob Welch? And his answer was no. Well, Verdon, I think, felt for certain Tommy was going to go to Reggie Smith. And so he directed Kenny Vorish to pitch to Yeager, and Yeager ripped his first home run of the year. But Lasorda said no. I was going to stay with Welch. 1 0 to Yeager. Verdon's happy tonight. Cincinnati got four runs off Joe Necro in the top of the first inning tonight at the Dome, and that was it. And the Astros came back to win 5 4. Ground ball to the Master. He'll go the short route to Strain for the force out on Russell. So the Dodgers turned away on one hit. And at the end of three and a half innings, Dodgers two, Giants nothing. Darrell Evans will lead off for San Francisco in the fourth. He'll be followed by Jack Clark and Rich Murray. Jerry Royce delivers a good fastball. Evans fly to left his first time up. One and one. The Giants looking for their first hit. And it's one and two to Evans. Royce pitched in three games against San Francisco last year. His record was one and two, but his earned run average was 1.13. And Jerry, in a relief role against the Giants this year, beat them in April. Breaking ball stays high. Two and two to Evans. Popped up foul. Say coming over, and in this ballpark, he's got room. Hitters hate to foul the ball at Candlestick. Willie McCovey was talking about that the other day. He said, I would have hit a lot better in my career at Candlestick Park, not been my home park. Because here, it looks like an acre. And those infielders start after your pop fouls. Jack Clark, the only giant runner tonight aboard on Russell's throwing error. Good off speed pitch for a strike. Clark, hot hitter, co player of the week in the National League last week with Steve Carlton, and a comebacker to Royce. Two away. That'll bring on the young first baseman from Los Angeles, Rich Murray. Jerry Royce having a brilliant campaign for the Dodgers. He's got to be one of the prime candidates for the National League All-Star team for the game at Dodger Stadium Tuesday night, July 8th. Murray hit seven home runs at Phoenix in 50 games, and they called him up. He breaks his bat and dribbles one out toward Garvey. Royce will cover, and they get him. So Royce keeps the ball in the infield. He rolls along, and at the end of four, Dodgers two, Giants nothing. By the blue in the fifth inning, we'll take a look at Jerry Royce, Davey Lopes, and Rudy Law with the Dodgers leading 2 0. The Giants have had all kinds of problems in Western Division parks. By the blue, beat the Padres, the fourth game of the season in San Diego. And the Giants then lost their next 15 games in other parts in the division until Eddie Whitson and Greg Minton combined to stop the Padres last night 2 to 1. So San Francisco's 2 and 18 on the road in the West. And they'll be in Dodger Stadium next weekend. Jerry Rice was out on that disputed ground ball to first in the second inning. Pops one foul out of play. Bob Stevens, who has covered the Giants up here for the San Francisco Chronicle for years, had a good line the other day when the Giants lost one down in San Diego. One and one to Royce. Bob said the Giants were emulating Napoleon Bonaparte, who had a lousy road club, too. <laughs> one and one to Royce with Lopes and Law to follow. Foul back. Royce 
he's still up there one and two. Steve Carlton lost tonight. The New York Mets beat him three to two. Carlton lifetime is under 500 against the Mets. Fouled again off to the left one and two. Pirates won a big ball game in Montreal. They were behind Steve Rogers and came back and beat the Expos six to four. So the Pirates are three and a half back of Montreal. Philadelphia remains two and a half out. That'll do it for Royce. Blues got his third strikeout. One out on the fifth, and here's Davey Lopes, who scored both runs tonight. Davey singled in the first, stole second, took third on Sadek's overthrow, and scored on Law's single off Blues Glove. And then Davey tripled over North set in the third inning, and Law's ground ball to the second baseman, Joe Strain, got him home. A strike. Ryan Blue trying to win his 10th. He's got a looks and a hole 0 and 2. Almost hit him with that one. 1 and 2. Jim Quick will dust off the plate for Blue. Not only have the Dodgers swept the first six this year from the Giants, they've shut San Francisco out in three of those. Davey fouls it back. And Jerry Royce has held the Giants hitless tonight through four innings. Breaking ball, Davey unable to hold up, and Quick calls him out. So Blue opens the fifth inning with a pair of strikeouts. That'll bring on Rudy Law, who's driven in both Dodger runs tonight. Law grew up as a giant fan. He said he used to hate the Dodgers. Went to high school in Palo Alto. And he's already had 11 hits this year against the Giants. He bunts, foul up along third. We are still waiting for Law's first bunt toward first base. Rudy, after singling in the run in the first inning, was picked off first base by Blue. He'd been picked off first twice in the last three games. Off speed pitch, and he may have found the alley anyway. North racing over. It'll fall, and Rudy going for two. And he's in there. So Law seemed to be baffled on the pitch, but he was able to stay with it. And he'll loop it into right center field for a double. So a dozen hits for Rudy Law this year. He's hitting almost 500 against San Francisco. With two away, Reggie Smith will try to get Law home. Reggie making his first start in nine days. Jay Johnstone filled in well for him. The Dodgers won five of the seven with Reggie out of there. Fastball granted up the middle and through to center field. Law will score, and the Dodgers lead three to nothing. Well, Reggie Smith is 46th RBI of the season. Only his 11th batting right-handed. And he got up to the left of O'Master and threw. So after the back-to-back -back strikeouts of Royce and Lopes, Blue allows the double to Law and the RBI single to Smith. And the Dodgers are leading by three in the fifth inning. Steve Garvey has fouled out and bounced out. Seven hits now for the Dodgers. They have at least one in each inning against Vita Blue. Blue's lifetime earn run average against the Dodgers is over five. And he's lost five out of eight to them. 
And they've got him down tonight, three nothing. Blue himself has said that he feels that the Dodgers in recent years have intimidated the Giants. Well, the Dodgers won 50 of the last 67 games between the two. That's pretty good intimidation. Rip the left. Herndon cuts it off and Smith stops at second. So three successive hits in the inning after two are out. Dusty Baker's coming up. And they start scurrying around in the San Francisco bullpen in the right field corner. Blue is due to bat fifth when the Giants hit in the fifth inning. Tom Griffin is the first man up. Tommy had not pitched in about four weeks when he got in the night before last in San Diego. Baker tonight is fly to right and bounced to short. First one misses low and inside. Baker's had a marvelous month of June. Eight home runs, 22 runs batted in. He's hitting 370 in this month. Blue misses high, 2 0. Oh. Smith at second, Garvey at first, two out of run over. Dodgers three, Giants nothing. We're in the fifth inning. Dusty trying to unload right there. And now he asked Jim Quick, was it a strike? Jim says, I don't have to tell you because you took the question out of my hand by swinging. They'll usually tell the batter, though. That's hit the left field and deep. Herman goes back. It's a three run homer. For Dusty Baker, his third home run against the Giants this year. The Dodgers have eight against San Francisco pitching. That makes it a four run inning, and the Dodgers are leading six to nothing. And the intimidation continues, at least for the moment, as Dusty Baker, who is second in the National League in home runs, swats his 17th. Runs batted in 47, 48, and 49. So the Dodgers lead by six. And remember, this all started with two out and the base is empty. A double by Law on a pitch in which he was fooled. An RBI single by Smith, a single by Garvey, and a three-run homer by Baker. Ron Say fouls one out of play. So the Dodgers continue to dominate the Giants. Grounded off of Evans's glove. Say is going to go for second. Herndon throw gets away and say we'll go to third. And Screen will run it down. So nothing going right for the Giants, and here comes manager Dave Bristol. Herndon will be charged with an error, and Bristol's going to make a pitching change. So we will assume that it'll be a double for say. And he takes third on the throwing error by Herndon. And Vita Blue is gone. So unless the Giants can stage a miraculous rally here tonight, Vita will have lost his last three starts at Candlestick Park. Say now, two doubles this evening and three at bats. The last five Dodger batters have come up with base hits. And Blue will be replaced by right-hander Tom Griffin. So Vida tonight went four and two-third innings. He allowed at least six runs. He gave up ten hits, struck out four, and walked one. And the Dodgers chase him in the fifth inning. All right, here's Bill Russell with say at third and two out. And Griffin's first pitch outside. John Pacella was the winner in Philadelphia when the Mets beat Steve Carlton and the Phillies three to two. 
Lee Mazzilli had an inside the park homer for New York. Bob Boone's two-run homer accounted for the Philadelphia runs. Strike to Russell, one and one. Cincinnati outhit the Astros tonight in Houston 13-8. But Houston won the ball game 5-4. Russell hits one to center north coming up, and it'll fall for a base hit. Say scores to make it 7-0. The Dodgers now have batted around. Russell's two for three. Eleven hits. And we can close the book on Vita Blue. He'll be charged with seven runs. So the Dodgers continue to wear out left-handers. Eight and oh against them so far this year. Tomorrow, this is your right-hander, John the Count Montefusco. And then left-hander Bob Nepper and right-hander Alan Ripley here in the doubleheader Sunday. Here's Jaeger. He takes a strike. They had over 36,000 tonight in Houston. And Jose Cruz drove in the game winner in a two-run eighth inning rally for the Astros. A bouncer up the middle, and that might get through. A big hop. Russell keeps going. North throw to third base, and Russell's in there. The ball getting away from Evans, but no further advancement. That means the Dodgers now have seven consecutive hits in the inning. And remember, Blue started off by striking out Royce and Lopes. A kangaroo hop. Getting Yeager a base hit and sending Russell to third. So everybody in the Dodger lineup has a base hit except Jerry Royce. And he pops one up foul. Sadek and Evans coming over. They might have a play. It's Evans to make the catch for the final out. The Dodgers, though, send 10 men to the plate. Five of them scored. There were seven hits and two left. At the end of four and a half innings, Dodgers seven, Giants nothing. Well, the Dodgers had their own workout here at Candlestick tonight, at least in the fifth inning. That's a seasonal high. Seven hits in an inning. And it produced five runs and a seven to nothing lead over San Francisco. Larry Herndon will lead off for the Giants. He'll be followed by Joe Strain and Johnny LeMaster. Herndon bounced out the second his first time up and checks his swing on the first one from Royce. It's slowly to short. Russell charging. On the run, throws out Herndon. Royce has now retired 12 of the 13, and with that, will make it 13 out of 14 to face him. The only giant runner, Jack Clark, who was safe on Russell's error in the first inning. Strain bounced out to Russell in the second. In the American League tonight, Milwaukee has jumped to a 3-0 lead over the Angels at the end of two and a half in Anaheim. Chris Knapp's been replaced by John Montague in the second. A strike to strain. Gorman Thomas hit his 13th home run, and Ben Ogilvy belted his 19th for the Brewers. Foul back by Strain 0-2. Strain, the leading hitter on the Giants, batting 3-15 as he stands at the plate. Chokes up on the bat. Fouled at the blade, so he's still 0-2. Boston beat Baltimore tonight, 3-2. Rick Waits of the Cleveland Indians shut out the Yankees in New York, 2-0 on a seven-hitter. He beat Rudy May. Detroit's Red Hot Tigers made it eight in a row tonight. They bowled over Toronto, 7-2. Tigers got five in the first inning. Lance Perry should a three-run homer his tenth of the season. One and two to strain. Gaylord Perry got another shutout tonight. Five nothing Rangers over Minnesota at Arlington. That's high. Two and two. Perry has what 52, 53 shutouts now in his career. Oakland won. Chicago one after four. Kansas City, Seattle scoreless after four. Strain fouls another one at the plate, so it's still two and two. Only National League game we didn't report on. At the end of six, San Diego won, Atlanta won. Doyle Alexander against John Curtis in San Diego. 
And Gene Tennis is at a home run. Jerry Royce trying to go nine and one. He's got a seven run lead in the fifth inning. Strain keeps fouling him off his foot. Joe's going to walk that one off. When you talk to Jerry Royce about the great turnaround this year, remember he was 7 and 14 last year for the Dodgers. The one thing that keeps coming to mind, he says, is that he used to be a high ball pitcher, but now he's able to keep that ball down. That's lifted to center field. Rudy Law jogging up for it and makes the one handed catch. That's only the third outfield fly. Two away and Johnny LeMaster coming up. Royce has pointed out that he thinks he's getting more extension from his arm this year. He finds himself bending more and he's getting closer to the ground when he delivers the ball. And all of those things have added up to his great start. LeMaster fouls one back. Royce has not allowed an earned run this season. And you talk about control. It's been pinpoint. One and one to LeMaster. Royce has 41 strikeouts and only seven unintentional walks all year. And a pop up to right field to Reggie Smith. And Royce sails through five innings without allowing a hit. We go to the sixth. Dodgers seven, Giants nothing. After five innings in San Francisco, the Dodgers seven runs, 12 hits and one error. The Giants no runs, no hits, and two errors. In their last game, the Dodgers pounded out a seasonal high 19 hits in Houston. The scoring change giving Dusty Baker a fifth hit in that game. Adding one on to the Dodger total. And the Knights have got a dozen hits in the first five innings, including the seasonal high seven hits in the fifth inning when they scored five runs and knocked out by the Blues. In the sixth, Tom Griffin will face Davey Lopes, Rudy Law, and Reggie Smith. With the Dodgers leading 7 0. Afternoon baseball for you the next two days from Candlestick. Warm up time 12 45 tomorrow. Dave Goltz, who has shut out the Giants twice this year. We'll be matched with John the Count Montefusco. And then Sunday we'll greet you at 11.45 in the morning for the doubleheader. Don Sutton and Bert Hooten against Bob Nipper and Alan Ripley. Lopes takes a slider for a called strike. The Giants have a new right fielder. Jim Wolford goes in for Jack Clark. Clark, of course, seemed to jam his ankle sliding into second in the first inning. So Wolford takes over out in right field. Lopes tonight has single, triple, struck out. Scored twice and stolen a base. Two balls and a strike. You're watching Dodger Baseball on KTTV Channel 11, Metro Media Television. Billy North coming up for it and makes the catch and almost failed over his head. That'll bring on Rudy Law, who has singled in a run, driven in another run on an infield grounder, and then launched that five-run fifth inning for the Dodgers when he doubled up the alley in right center field with two out to get things started. Oops. North almost came too far in for that one. Ball one to Law. Tom Griffin, 32-year-old right-hander. This is outside 2-0. Tom, a veteran of 14 professional seasons as you look at Gary Lavelle warming up. Griffin, a National League Rookie Pitcher of the Year back in 1969, 21-11. Count to Law, 2-1. Tommy's had two career one hitters 10 years ago against the Padres, six years ago against the Pirates. That's a strike. 
two and two to long. Three and two. One out, bases empty, sixth inning. Reggie Smith on deck. Tom Griffin out of Grant High School in Van Nuys, went to Los Angeles Valley and Pierce Community Colleges, now makes his home in Poway. A lot of the San Diego Padres live in Poway. Brown ball to the right side, Joe Strain in front of it. That'll do it for law. Two out for Reggie Smith. Reggie singled in a run his last time up. He's one for three tonight. The big blow, Dusty Baker's three-run homer. That made it a six-to-nothing ball game in the fifth. For the first time, Reggie turns around to bat from the left side. Reggie started the night the number two hitter in the National League, a point back to Keith Hernandez. He grounds one past the mound. Strain comes up with it, and Murray digs it out. Murray lost track of the outs. The Dodgers are gone in order, and at the end of five and a half innings, Dodgers seven, Giants nothing. The Dodgers have a new right fielder as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Pedro Guerrero comes in to take over for Reggie Smith, who made the last out of the top of the sixth. Jerry Royce has still not allowed a hit as he prepares to face Mike Sadek, pinch hitter Terry Whitfield, and Bill North. In the bottom of the sixth inning. Sadek was called out on the strikes his other time up in the third. Earlier this year, Royce took a no-hitter into the seventh inning in Atlanta, and with two out, Jeff Burroughs doubled over Law's head in center. That's high ball two. I guess the closest Jerry ever came to a no-hitter was against the Phillies. And Larry Boa broke it up in the ninth inning one night. That's a high strike. Two and one to Mike Sadek. Jerry pitched a two hitter last year in Houston. Faced only 29 batters. Two and two. Giants have had only one base runner, Jack Clark, on Bill Russell's throwing error with two out on the first inning. That'll do it for Sadek. Royce has both of his strikeouts when he's faced Sadek tonight. And now here is Terry Whitfield coming up to hit for Tom Griffin. Dave Bristol not going with the percentages here. He's going to ask a left-handed batter, Whitfield, to try to get something started against the left-hander, Royce. Whitfield, who's from Blythe, is hitting 252. Well, one. Of course, since Mike Ivey has retired, Bristol is without one of his right-handed pinch hitters. Rennie Stennis available. Jim Quick's going to make sure that that batter's box at least will fit Whitfield legally. Terry went too far around, swept the bat across the plate. So one and one. Gary Lavelle has been throwing in the San Francisco bullpen. Fouled out of play. One and two. There's Gary. Lavelle voiced the fervent hope that the Giants would trade him to the Cardinals before the June 15th deadline, but they didn't. Ground ball. Foul, says Paul Runge. Mighty close. The Giants got a break on Royce's ground ball off the first baseline on the second inning, and the Dodgers may have gotten one there. Let's see if we can see it. A little too fast.
Royce happy to get that one back. One two offering. That evens again. The Dodgers trying to make it seven straight over the Giants this year without a loss. Again out of play, two and two. To show you how the Dodgers have monopolized the Giants this year, in the seven games counting tonight, the Dodgers have outscored the Giants 35 to 8. Off speed pitch, and Whitfield stays alive. Fast ball hit the Russell. Two out. So Royce working on a string now. 15 in a row he's retired since Clark was safe on the air. Here's Bill North. He's bounced out twice. And it wouldn't be a bit surprising to see North try to lay one down and say gives him half a chance. And Bill looking down there before he steps in. He's swinging. 0 and 1. North, a much better hitter, batting right handed. He's up over 290. 60 points higher than when he swings from the other side. 0 and 2. Jerry Royce has won six of his eight games this year at Dodger Stadium. But he's pitching a strong game here tonight in San Francisco, leading 7 0. Foul off the first base side. Garvey going over, but he will not have room. Guerrero is coming in. So the guy's still 0 and 2 to Bill North. Another thing that has marked Royce's fine 1980 season has been the fact that Jerry has kept the ball in the park. He's allowed only two home runs this year. And he's worked now in almost 90 innings. North stepped out and got time call just before Royce released it. So no pitch. Royce wanted that one. But inside, says Jim Quick, so it's one and two. High two and two. They've had a lot going on up here in San Francisco. In eight days, well, Bristol and Montefusco had their fight. Ed Halicki and Mark Hill went to new teams. McCovey retired. Now Ivy retires. There's a drive to left field. Baker going back. He's there and makes the catch. Montefusco, who pitches tomorrow, had a good line. He said, what this club needs is a good psychiatrist. Ben will be back in a moment. Jerry Royce still is not allowed to hit. We go to the seven. Dodgers seven, Giants nothing. Well, as we go to the seventh inning with the Dodgers leading seven to nothing and trying to read your mind, I'm sure you're talking about it. I'm also sure you're over that idea of jinxes. So Jerry Royce has a no-hitter going through six innings. The last Dodger no-hitter, Bill Singer, in a twilight game with Philadelphia 10 years ago. Of course, Koufax had a no-hitter against the Giants, and one of the more memorable no-hitters way back when, Rex Barney of the Dodgers pitched a no-hitter in the rain in the polo grounds against the Giants. But that's ancient history. It's the seventh inning tonight. We've got a lot of baseball left. It's still 7-0 Dodgers, and Royce is still holding on. Lavelle, they tell us, was one of the disgruntled members of the Giants. He had been their number one left-hander, and then Al Holland came along, and Holland had really taken over that role. 
because Holland's earned run average is less than one. Lavelle is one and five with the league. The Dodgers have beaten him this year. He is one and eight lifetime with them. Ball one to Garvey. Steve has fouled out, grounded out, and single. Fouled away. One and one. The big story now for the crowd, of course, Jerry Royce has retired the last 16 in a row. And there goes the ball into left field. That has a shot. It's gone. So Garvey, a line drive home run. And the Dodgers lead eight to nothing. For Steve Garvey, his 16th home run, 58 runs batted in. And the Dodgers continue to jump on the Giants. Ball one to Baker, one and all. Oh. We'll take another look at Garvey's stroke. But before we do, we're back to live, and that's high to Baker. Now for the Garvey Marching and Chowder Society. Good level hard swing and a line drive over the left field fence. Two and one to Dusty Baker. The Dodgers with two home runs tonight so they've hit nine home runs against the Giants this year. Baker has three. Say Smith and Garvey each have two. That's a pop fly into right field. Jim Wolford taking over for Jack Clark makes the catch. We have a $20 book of Union All Auto Script sent to the David and Margaret home for children in Laverne on that home run by Garvey. Ron Say has a couple of doubles. He's two for three. Don't forget, Jerry Royce leading eight to nothing has not allowed a hit through six innings. He has retired the last 16 in a row. The only giant base runner was Jack Clark, who reached first base on the era by Bill Russell. Strike. Right. Ground ball up along third. Darrell Evans at the bag. Gets him. So Bill Russell coming up. Russell has fly to center and then single twice, driven in a run. Eight to nothing Dodgers. Two out in the seventh, and the story now is Jerry Royce. Strike. One and one. Gary Lavelle, premier left-hander who has been rusting a little bit, and his record shows it. Little nubber. Bad hop, and Gary took too long. He didn't get the ball to come up, and he was expecting it to bounce up into his glove. We'll see how they rule it. Giants have already made two errors. It will go as a base hit. So he didn't get the high bounce that threw him off. Russell will take it gladly. That's his third hit. The crowd is booing because they call it a hit. You can judge. High bouncer. Now watch him come over and expect the ball to come up. I think he thought he might be on AstroTurf. And it didn't come up. Whoops. So Russell gets a base hit. On one to Yeager. 14 Dodger hits. Coming off a 19 hit game in Houston. 
So the hitters have exploded. And Yeager hits a high breaking ball up the alley. Russell is to third and he will hold him. And into second base goes Yeager with his double. So three hits and a run off Lavelle. 15 hits for the Dodgers. And the batter is Jerry Royce. So all of the drama now will be on Jerry Royce and how he does. Last year, Royce pitched a two hitter against the Astros. Little number down towards Joe Strain. And that's it. The Dodgers settle for a run on three hits. At the end of six and a half innings, Dodgers eight, Giants nothing. Well, Jerry Royce has been here before. Jerry Royce, way back in 1972, pitched eight innings of no-hit baseball against the Philadelphia Phillies. And of course, in 72, he was pitching for Houston. He had a no hitter before allowing the only hit in the ninth inning. That was 1972. And he's into the seventh inning tonight. He has Darrell Evans, Jim Wolford, and Rich Murray. And our thanks to the Giants for the mention. So Darrell Evans. Evans, the captain of the Giants. Now back, 0-1. Royce only has two strikeouts, so it's not as if he's overpowering the Giants by any means. He has struck out Mike Sadek both times. Oh, and 2 And where... Jerry's success basically in keeping the ball down. He has come to Evans about letter high inside. Popped it up on the left side. Ron Say. So that's 17 in a row retired by Royce. Now Jim Wolford. Remember, Jack Clark was aboard on the era. He's been the only giant base runner. Clark hurt his leg sliding into second. Did stay in to hit back to the box in the fourth, and Al Wolford finishing up for him, and it's his first at bat. Fouled away. Wolford hitting 236. Line drive foul down the right field line. The closest thing to a hit was pinch hitter Terry Whitfield, who hit a shot that was fouled by less than a foot outside a third. 0 oh and 2 to Walford. Ball one. Jerry Royce has one out in the seventh inning. Not only leading eight to nothing. So far, no hits. High fly ball to right field. Guerrero is there. Boy, that's something now. That's 18 in a row retired by Royce. So two down and Rich Murray, the 22-year-old first baseman, hit into a force play and grounded to Garvey. Fastball for a strike. Royce pitching like an all-star. He pitched in the 1975 all-star game. 
One and one. He started the 1975 All-Star game, turned in a scoreless three innings. Ground ball to the hole. Russell picks it up, sets for the throw, and gets him. Well, now, you don't really take these things seriously until the seventh inning. And now you pull up a chair and lean forward, and the drama is right here. At the end of seven, Royce has not allowed a hit, and the Dodgers lead the Giants eight to nothing. Paid attendance, total 21,108, and the paid is 20,285. On the hottest night we can remember, or any giant Dodger game of candlestick. I mean, you could grow orchids up here. Davy Lopes. Ball one. Gary Lavelle, the third giant pitcher, he was roughed up for a run and three hits in the seventh inning. Ball two. Lopes has a single and a triple. Two for four. He has scored twice. Stolen a base. In there. Ground ball in the hole, off Evans' glove and deflected into shallow left, where LeMaster finally picks it up. So it's the third hit for Lopes. The Dodgers now with 16 hits in the game. Evans getting his glove on it, but all he did was deflect it beyond LeMaster. Of course, LeMaster couldn't have gone in the hole and thrown out Lopes anyway. So the Dodgers with 19 hits against Houston in the final game. That means 35 hits in their last two games. 1-0 to Rudy Law. Fisted back a second base. Base hit. Well, you talk about bloopers. The so Rudy Law thumbs one, and the Dodgers have 17 hits. That's three hits for Law, and Pedro Guerrero making his first at bat. Reggie Smith returned to the starting lineup tonight, had a base hit and a run batted in, and when the game got one sided, Reggie came out. So well, here's Guerrero. Guerrero hitting 464. Good little slider for a strike. 0 and 1. There's that blooper just over the reach of LeMaster and Strain. Two on, nobody out. 8 0 Dodgers. But the big story is Jerry Royce attempting a no hitter. He's got one through seven innings. One one to Guerrero. Then you have Garvey. Lopes at second. Law at first. One and one. The Dodgers trying to make it seven straight over the Giants this year. Checked his swing. They look at first. No swing, says Jerry Dale. I'm surprised the crowd booed. That wasn't really very close to a half swing. Two and one. All three. Dodgers leading eight nothing. And they have two on, nobody out, and Lavelle in a lot of trouble. Al Holland 
begins to loosen up in the giant bullpen. High fly ball to Billy North. So one away. That'll bring up Garvey. Steve Garvey fouled out and grounded out. Then he singled in the fifth inning and homered in the seventh. Two for four. When the Giants bat in the bottom of the eighth inning, Larry Herndon, Joe Strain, and Johnny LeMaster. Ball one. There's Al Holland with his earned run average of less than one, warming up in the bullpen with his team down eight to nothing. But that makes him wonder. Ground ball to the hole, backhanded by Murray, goes to LeMaster for the fours. Good play by Rich. Lopes goes to third, and with two out, Dusty Baker coming up. Baker flied out twice, grounded out, and put the big slug on by the blue, a three-run home run in the fifth inning. The Giants get bad news. Baker fouls it off first base. Murray coming over. He has a play. He's got the ball. Jack Clark suffered a sprained right knee. And he's on day-to-day, -day, so we don't know whether Clark will be able to play anymore during this weekend. The Dodgers get a couple of base hits, but that's all. At the end of seven and a half, boy, don't go off. The big story yet to be told. Dodgers eight, Giants nothing. Well, here we go. Jerry Royce is six outs away from a no-hitter. In the eighth inning, Larry Herndon, Joe Strain, and Johnny LeMaster. Ball one. Herndon has grounded out twice, 0 for 2. Fouled away. The only giant base runner, Jack Clark, reached first base on an error in the first inning. The so Royce has faced one over the minimum, only 22 batters. Smothered by Say and gets him. And now there are five outs left to go. Ron Say. Taking a base hit away from Larry Herndon. Diving at the ball. The one down and Joe Strain. Grounded out and flied out. Ball one. Even the crowd increased its applause on that play. That's in there. One and one. One out in the eighth. Eight to nothing Dodgers, but what a moment in the life of 31-year-old Jerry Royce. Ground ball to Russell. He has it. Over to Garvey, and now he is four outs away. In the old days, whenever a pitcher was getting close to a no-hitter, we would always say, crank up the tape recorder. I guess now it's load up the Betamax. Two out in the eighth. Eight to nothing Dodgers. And Johnny LeMaster, the batter. LeMaster grounded out and flied out. Ground ball to the hole. Backhanded by Russell. Long throw. Got him. Needs only three more. Jerry Rice, three outs away from a no hitter. And at the end of eight innings, the Dodgers eight and the Giants nothing. Well, we're to the top of the ninth inning. And even though there are an awful lot of Giant fans here, the big crowd cannot wait for the bottom of the ninth. As you look into the Dodger dugout, they are looking up at a few fireworks going on. But the big story, the fireworks on the mound, Jerry Royce. We told you that Royce had a no-hitter for eight innings in 1972. He was pitching for Houston. 
in the ninth inning for the Philadelphia Phillies, Larry Boa broke up the no hitter. So for the second time in his life, Royce will be going into the ninth inning in pursuit of a no hitter. Jerry with his legs crossed wearing a windbreaker and as you can see no one is talking to him. That's Baker on his right. And Dusty howling off but it's as if Royce is on another planet. Nobody speaking to him. That's Don Sutton and Davey Lopes on his left. But neither Sutton nor Lopes nor Baker acting as if Royce is even in the dugout. And you can understand. In the ninth inning when Jerry is pitching. He'll be pitching to Mike Sadek, Gary Lavelle, and Bill North, or anybody else that Dave Bristol decides to send up. So we got one going here. Ninth inning, eight nothing Dodgers. Hit it off the end of the bat, a fly ball to shallow right, and Jim Wolford handles Say one away. The last Dodger to pitch a no hitter was Bill Singer in 1970. Two Dodger pitchers have no hit at the Giants, Sandy Koufax, Rex Barney. The last time a no hitter was thrown against the Giants, 1968. Ray Washburn of the Cardinals beat the Giants two to nothing at Candlestick Park. It was one night after Gaylord Perry had no hit the Cardinals on the same mound. That's foul back and out of play. So there will be a lot on the line when Royce takes the hill in the ninth inning. And we thought we'd get that mention out of the way. Russell is three for four. Ground foul and the count one and two. Now the one two pitch ball two two and two to Bill Russell one out in the ninth inning Dodgers eight runs 17 hits the Giants no runs no hits fly ball to Bill North two down in the ninth for the moment at least the Dodgers are almost cluttering up the stage. The people here want the hitters to get it over with and let's get back to Royce. And here's Jaeger. Walked intentionally, hit into a force play single and double. Royce through eight innings has come close to having the no hitter broken up three times. Here's a one hopper to Darrell Evans and that'll do it. Whitfield as a pinch hitter almost had a double in the sixth inning then grounded out. Herndon lost a hit on a diving stop by Say in the eighth. LeMaster lost a hit on a good play by Russell in the eighth. But now it's at the end of eight and a half innings. The Dodgers eight and the Giants nothing. Here are the Dodgers with the leather who will try to hold on to Jerry Royce's no hitter. Steve Garvey at first. Davey Lopes at second. Bill Russell at short. Ron Say at third. Dusty Baker in left. Rudy Law in center. Daryl Thomas has taken over in right field for Pedro Guerrero. Behind the plate, Steve Yeager. And face to face with the big moment in his baseball life, Jerry Royce. Three outs away from a no hitter, and Mike Sadek, the batter, fouled away. Sadek has struck out twice in the third and in the sixth. So in a game that has been over since the fifth inning when the Dodgers scored five in a sense it is just beginning Rennie Stennett is out on deck one and one Jerry was thirty one a little more than a week ago foul back out of play. So in the 70th game of the 1980 season on a Friday night June the 27th 1980 Jerry Royce three outs away ground ball to say over to Garvey and he is two outs away and the first time any emotion at all shown by Royce he had his back to home plate he made a little fist with his left hand and you could see how happy he was that he had gotten one of them. 
Now it's Rennie Stennett coming off the bench as a pinch hitter to bat for Lavelle. So Rennie Stennett hitting for Gary Lavelle. Ball one. And Royce might have pitched beyond himself that time. Maybe trying to get a little something extra. One ball and no strike. Fouled away. One and one. So all the drama right there at the mound. Jerry Royce before over 21,000. Two outs away from a no hitter. One ball, one strike. Fouled away. One and two. The Dodger outfield shaded ever so slightly towards right field. That's the defense for Stennett. Stennett a tough out, even though he has lost his job momentarily to Joe Strain. One ball, two strikes. Bouncer down to Russell. He has the hop. He is one out away from it. Jerry Royce, who was denied a no-hitter eight years ago against Philadelphia when Larry Boa singled in the ninth, is now one out away from a no-hitter. The first one we have seen by a Dodger pitcher in 10 years. The first no-hitter at Candlestick in 12 years. But he has to get Bill North. North has grounded out twice, applied to left. A veteran who is a threat to bunt over three. Even the Giant fans now, you can sense our rooting. Royce got an ovation when he went to the hill to start the inning. Ball one. Eight nothing Dodgers, but it is Jerry Royce. Little number back to Royce. He picks it up. He's got a no hitter. Jerry Royce at 31 years old has done it. A no hitter. He missed a perfect game only by an error by Bill Russell in the first inning. What a magnificent moment for the big blonde. Rick Sutcliffe throwing his arms around him. And all of the Dodgers happy for their player representative who put on a magnificent show. There were three balls that were close. A foul ball by Terry Whitfield. The ground ball by Herndon in the eighth. The ground ball by LeMaster in the eighth. And that's it. Jerry Royce, who was 31 on the 19th of June, celebrates it on the 27th of June with a no-hitter. A magnificent effort. The Dodgers, eight runs, 17 hits, and one error. The Giants, no runs, no hits, two errors. To repeat, the first no-hitter by a Dodger pitcher since 1970 by Bill Singer. The first no-hitter at Candlestick since Ray Washburn in 1968. Sandy Koufax was here and was able to put the hug on Royce. If anybody knows how it feels, Sandy could write a book about it. There's Sandy walking off with Danny Ozark. Jerry Royce getting a standing ovation. You can bet he'll be on the postgame show, and it will be coming right up.